My name's Dot. I've lived in Derbyshire for about 30 years. Originally, I'm from Wigan. I grew up on a farm with my sister. Just normally, basically, your average person, you know. I had my children, had a good job, nothing untoward, no sign of becoming an alcoholic. It wasn't in my genes or anything like that. My dependency was really, really bad at one time. I got um, some bad news, uh, the death of my mother in 2006, and I instantly turned to drink. I felt as though it gave me um, happiness, if you know what I mean. I blotted everything out and it made me feel good and I got totally, utterly, unfortunately, depending on it. I used to drink in the morning when I used to get up and then I'd like have a normal life and have my dinner. But as the time went on, I didn't want anything to eat. That wasn't good enough, it had to be alcohol. I'd be sat outside pubs at six o'clock at night, waiting for the doors to open, then I could get half cider. The alcohol just took over, so I moved out into my own flat and left the children in the house because I knew I was going to be evil. My daughter will tell me when she used to come and visit, I'd hide all the empty bottles everywhere to disguise it. Oh, I'd only have like one. Oh, it was really, there's another 20 in empty behind the settee type of thing. It was horrendous to them, but they've got bad memories. And then unfortunately, I uh, ended up nearly setting fire to where I was and social services found me. And, and well, I was dead, practically. I felt myself, to be honest, in my flat, I've had heart attack, in stroke. I knew I was going, the alcohol killed me. So I, they took me to hospital and basically, um, they took me out of hospital and took me to Oakland's care home, where I dried out, because I had no choice. I couldn't move, I couldn't walk. I, bodily functions had gone kaput. So, hence, I, I was in a wheelchair and, I couldn't read because I'd had a stroke. My liver is permanently damaged. If, if, I, if somebody gave me a little vodka tomorrow, it could kill me. They had to get my body, and I had to get my body working, because you've got to tell your body what to do again. You can't just get up and walk, because your memory's gone. People who are alcohol dependent are alcohol dependent, they won't listen and won't be told what to do about certain issues. So it does take a lot self-motivation really when you begin to accept that you actually do need help and people aren't just, I don't know, trying to interfere in your life. A penny just drops in your life thinking, I don't want to die yet, I've got to take more care of myself than what I have been doing. You know, I would like to see 90, not 60. And... Found Rhubarb Farm from the care home, and that's how I ended up working here. And then I just started helping out on farm. Obviously, being a farmer's daughter, I love it, it's in my blood. So, of course, the sort of the farms obviously helped me um, get motivated again. I mean, even now, it's simple things like getting hold of spade. I will sort of off balance occasionally or screw work to it. So physically and mentally, it's marvellous. The rhubarb farm was very, very important. I'd have probably been lost totally for something to do. It's better, it's more outdoors, it's more agricultural, more keeping fit and get involved back to nature. When you're first alcoholic and you're out, um, your body's here but your mind's not because you don't move, you don't, because you, you think everybody's looking at you and you don't know how to approach people because that part of your personality is gone. So you've got to revamp and get to know people. So from when I come here and people come here and see me, hopefully they look at me for inspiration. Everything that Rubo Farm does to, yeah, keep people on, people like me. I've had this option and this is where I've come. I probably would have been dead. And now I've got a granddaughter who's 10. There is another generation that want to see the grandma <laughs> alive and healthy. 
I've got a proper full life back.